Hi guys, uh, I am uh, making a video real quick on uh, how I'm building my dumb RGB controllers. This is a uh, this is nothing more than a Sterilite container, six point two quart Sterilite locking lid container. I got these at Walmart for I want to say twenty four dollars uh, to the uh, shipped to the store. There was a pack of six of them, so um, what is that, four bucks a piece um, for a controller box. And all I've done was I just took the container and um, I set up a whole assembly line here. I have five of them to build. And basically, I took this, con I I took this box and I took some measurements of the inside of the box and after I measured the inside and I'm, I kind of cut out the corners, what I did was I went over to my table saw, I measured out, and I uh, took just a piece of scrap plywood or whatever I had laying around. This is T111 left over from building the shed here, um, just sitting in here waiting to be used. And uh, I took some black spray paint, sprayed it down so that it didn't have the wood color, placed it inside the box, and that leads us to where we are over here with our controllers. Um, pretty much uh, all I did here was I made room for... Uh, it's a little harder to see on this. Here we go, this one here. You can see the little eyelets that I've drilled out and put the eyelets in place. And that is where the uh, power supply will be mounted, and that's the next step. Um, these controllers here are the new style uh, controllers that I got from Raywoo. These have the RJ45 connections on the board. All three of these do. But then this one here is the older style. And what I did was I already had um, I already had these uh, biscuit connectors that a friend of mine got for me. These were I think these were a quarter a piece for me to buy. So I just will make the solder connection here to uh, this point, to these points here, two, uh, two wires, and I'll run them up and split them off in between the two here and connect them up. That way, whenever, um, whenever it comes to connecting the data wire, then these just pop right in place, and bam, that's what it'll look like. So the next step you see is going to have the power supplies sitting in place, and I'll just zip tie them down to those eyelets there. All right, and here they are with the power supplies installed. The... Um, the next thing I did was I wanted to take one of the lids and put it over to the top and see how this snaps in place. And if it's just fine, although right here there seems to be a small problem. On these lids, there are these little lifters right here. They're corner supports, so whenever you stack more than one of these cases on top of another, that they don't crush the contents. Now, it's raised up here, and what that does is that creates a larger opening here, which we'll address this later, but what I need to do is I need to um, take all of these lids, and I need to shave down this little, this little uh, corner support here. And here they are with the power supplies installed. The... Um, the next thing I did was I wanted to take one of the lids and put it over to the top and see how this snaps in place. And if it's just fine, although right here there seems to be a small problem. On these lids, there are these little lifters right here. They're corner supports, so whenever you stack more than one of these cases on top of another, that they don't crush the contents. Now, it's raised up here, and what that does is that creates a larger opening here, which we'll address this later, but what I need to do is I need to um, take all of these lids, and I need to shave down this little, this little uh, corner support here, and here they are with the power supplies installed. The... Um, the next thing I did was I wanted to take one of the lids and put it over to the top and see how this 
snaps in place. And if it's just fine, although right here, there seems to be a small problem. On these lids, there are these little lifters right here. They're corner supports, so whenever you stack more than one of these cases on top of another, that they don't crush the contents. Now, it's raised up here, and what that does is that creates a larger opening here, which we'll address this later. But what I need to do is I need to um, take all of these lids and I need to shave down this little, this little uh, corner support here. I uh, just wanted to take a second and show you the first one that I cut. I um, just changed the blade on my cutter and I... Uh, I took the blade and I just pushed with my thumb very easily and I made a sawing motion and it cut through one side and then I went up this way, I went up this way and cut through the other side and uh, if it has a tendency to, plastic has a tendency to break. So what I did was I have my uh, hot glue gun here standing by so if one of these should crack that I can just fill it in with some hot glue for some uh, weather protection. I'm sure somebody else will say use silicone or exterior sealant of some sort. Now we'll move along to uh, uh, connecting up all of the pigtails into the controllers. And once those are in, connecting up the wires and adding in a power cord. Now today I'm going to go through and I'm going to begin adding all of the female pigtails that I'm going to connect to all nine channels and I'm going to uh, uh, make these connections and I want to show you how I do it. Oh, and there's one other thing I wanted to mention about the connection here uh, between the power supply and the controller. Uh, you'll notice I'm using regular household electrical wire. But one of the things that I was told a long time ago was that you should always use the thickest gauge possible uh, to connect your power supply to your controller. For 12 gauge is overkill, 14 gauge is overkill. I'm sure 16 gauge is plenty strong enough to run from here to here. But I have this scrap laying around and I'm, you know, it pretty much is useless for any other application. But for this instance, I just wanted to point out that you can use 12, a uh, regular household 12 voltage, or you can use, uh, um, I'm sorry, regular household 110 volt, 14 gauge or 12 gauge. It, it fits in there, it's nice and tight. Um, and it's going to make a good connection. What I have here is a very inexpensive Epson uh, Epson printer. Uh, and why I got this is I, I honestly I bought this for I think it was twenty five dollars off of Amazon. One of the cheapest ones I could find. Uh, and I only use this for a little bit of labeling because I really don't label a lot of things other than. Uh, the stuff for just for my light show. And I also use this to uh, number my pigtails so that whenever I am outside at the display, all I have to do is look at the pigtail and it'll tell me what number uh, this is connected to on, uh, for the channel. Uh, all I have here is just a normal tape dispenser with a regular scotch tape dispensing roll. Take a piece of tape, put it right over the number, and then I just add the tape to it. I don't even bother. I, when I first did this, what I learned was I was wasting so much of this uh, tape that uh, whenever whenever I printed out the number nine, it would be on a piece of tape that I'd have to wrap around and around and around and have to cut off the end. And I was wasting so much just to have the number nine where, uh, where I could just peel off the back and just stick it to here. Uh, when I realized that I was wasting so much, uh, I just decided, well, I'm going to use clear scotch tape, which does the same job. So I'm just taking the number and and uh, putting it right on the tape and wrapping the tape around. And all I'm going to do now is up underneath, I have my strain reliefs already installed in my box. I'm going to run my cord right through it. And work gets a little tight in here whenever you're doing this. But suffice to say... The board actually has, and I'll lift this up, hopefully you can get a decent look at it. 
you'll see right behind between these MOSFETs, you have uh, letter codes. One says common, B, G, and R. And they're, they're consistent the whole way through. So as long as you remember RGB from, from the right to the left, and then the common is on the end. But this is really simple. I mean, this is, this is all there is to it. We deduce that the, uh, that the, uh, uh, the green was our yellow on the pigtail. And we'll just insert it and tighten it down. Maybe I can move this forward and zoom in a little bit because some of you, oh, some of you really need this because you need the training wheels. And that's okay too because that's just the way it is whenever you're learning something new. We'll do blue. Now once it's tightened down, you want to give a little tug on the wire so that there is no play in the wire. If the, if the wire on, pops right out, what's going to happen is you're not going to have a good connection and one of your colors on that string of RGBs is not going to work correctly. So, and then we have our black as our common. So now, there we have our first pigtail marked in place. And now we'll just continue. Now, once it's tightened down, you want to give a little tug on the wire so that there is no play in the wire. If the, if the wire on, pops right out, what's going to happen is you're not going to have a good connection and one of your colors on that string of RGBs is not going to work correctly. So, and then we have our black as our common. Now, once it's tightened down, you want to give a little tug on the wire so that there is no play in the wire. If the, if the wire on, pops right out, what's going to happen is you're not going to have a good connection and one of your colors on that string of RGBs is not going to work correctly. So, and then we have our black as our common. And uh, I wanted to uh, show you halfway through the process here. You'll notice I've got all of my cords laid out here. And sure, they don't line up exactly perfect, but that's just the way it is. I have 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. And one of the things I want to do is I want to make sure that the number is always pointing to the front because the next step I'm going to do is I, I've got to turn this over and I have to tighten the strain relief. And uh, the strain relief with all of those cords facing the same way will now, uh, will now keep it nice and tight. Now, once it's tightened down, you want to give a little tug on the wire so that there is no play in the wire. If the, if the wire on, pops right out, what's going to happen is you're not going to have a good connection and one of your colors on that string of RGBs is not going to work correctly. So, and then we have our black as our common. The strain relief is useful so that if you trip over it and this pulls, that it doesn't pull out on the on the actual component that it's connected to. These are the strain reliefs I buy. They are I buy them in the hundred pack because I since I build so many of these, the uh, the knockout's a half inch. It says a half inch knockout and a three eighths inch trade size. That's the uh, that's the one I get. I get a whole box of them, and obviously this I just bought this last year. And with as many controllers as I built in the past year and a half, um, I've used a lot of them. There, you figure there's uh, five controllers I'm working on now uh, and a sixth one behind it to back it up for extra. Um, I've used a lot of them, so 25 or so. Uh, anyway, back over here I wanted to show you that if I pull physically on this, I'm pulling on the box versus pulling on the cord that are connected. So there is a little close-up of what it looks like uh, when they're all connected up and um, and once again uh, the uh, the if you look inside the box there you'll see I have that sticking out there that's okay to leave that in there uh, but what's important is that those edges where the wire comes through the sheeting are stuck in between here that's what's important